Okay, so I'm in an ongoing saga with the Mr. Deconverted Man. And we had round two of said saga where he posted another video where he responded to my video. And I watched it and I told him, your video is disingenuous. And you said to me, no, it's not. Far wiser response, Deconverted Man, to be quite honest with you, would have been, how is it disingenuous, Greg? Not, no, it's not. I wouldn't have said it if it wasn't. Honestly, I would never, anybody, anybody, just, just, just so you know, going forward, any of you out there, if I tell you something's disingenuous, I, I'm not saying it unless I, unless I really think it is. So the far wiser response to me would have been, how is it disingenuous? So let me explain how it's disingenuous. Okay. In the video, that is the response to me. You use two words. You use the word evidence and you use the word proof. Do you hear that? Evidence and proof, those are different words, deconverted man, and they mean different things. Yeah, and you conflate the two, and you use them interchangeably as you see fit to obfuscate the points in a way that I find really disingenuous. So, how does it break down? It goes like this. Provide me some evidence, Craig. Well, here's one piece of evidence, here's two pieces of evidence, here's three pieces of evidence. That's not proof, Craig. You see what I mean? Those are different words, and they mean different things. And you try to use them interchangeably. Yeah, he's persecuting me. We can be quite honest. Yes, he's persecuting me. I feel persecuted by him. I'm glad you all noticed that. Yes, persecution is real. And it's occurring to me as we speak. So, what's the issue? Why am I bringing this up, Deconverter Man? Because this is a teachable moment. Not just for you, but for all atheists and all Christians who are struggling to get along. There's a reason why you are struggling to get along. Deconverter Man didn't notice that he was actually asking me something different than he was really asking me. He thinks he's asking me for evidence. But the second I give him said evidence, he goes, that's not proof, Craig. Those are two different words and they mean two different things. So what he is actually doing is demanding that I prove to him that God is real or we can't continue with the conversation. That's why these conversations break down. Because everybody tries to, the Christians do this too. And if you're a Christian, you can learn. This is a teachable moment for you, too. There's a reason why I have an easy time getting along with atheists, is I studiously try to avoid zero-sum conclusions, zero-sum confrontations. You're an atheist. I get it. You don't believe that God is real. I'm a Christian. You, get, you should get it. I believe that God is real. So if you always route us back to that, prove that God is real, we can't go forward, then we can't go forward, and we're only going to conflict. And if you want to waste your time like that, Deacon Vernon, man, go for it. There's a thousand Christians on Twitter right now who I promise you, you go out there and you go, hey, give me evidence. And they'll go, kalam, and you guys can waste the next 10 hours of your life. That's not really convincing, blah, 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 blah. And you guys can go back and forth for the next 10 hours. I try to avoid that here. So I'll only do this one more time. And this is evidence, Deacon Vernon, man. It is not proof. It is not evidence that I expect to be convincing to you. you. You said, give me some evidence. I'm going to give you some pieces of evidence. They are going to be evidence. They are not going to be evidence that I think you is going to be convincing to you. See the difference? So, here is the pieces of evidence. Again, I doubt that this is going to be convincing to you. So, as I told Deacon Vernon, man, I disappear into my prayer closet. I disappear and I go there for two hours and I go, Oh, holy God, oh, holy God, please come, please come, oh, holy God. Yeah, that's the way I pray, deal with it. <laughs> it's weird, all right, fine, it's weird. So that's the way I pray, deal with it. And God becomes really, I have a powerful experience that I'm 150% convinced is real and I'm 150% convinced is the Holy Spirit of God. Now, we both agreed, deconverted man, that it is 150% real to me, to me. We both agree that I am having some form of a powerful, subjective, internal experience. So when you ask for evidence, I actually don't even need to. The experience happens. What you're actually asking is, prove that it's God. That's what you're actually asking. We both agree on the experience, so I don't have to give you evidence that I'm having the experience. We both agree I'm having it, and we both agree that it's real to me. So why are you asking me for evidence? Because you are demanding that I prove to you that it's God. 
Draw your own conclusions. Here's two pieces of evidence that it's the Holy Spirit of God. And I don't expect this to be convincing to you. You're an atheist. It's going to take a lot for you to believe that that's actually God. That isn't up to me. And that's not my agenda to prove it to you. So, here's two pieces of evidence. Deal with them as you will. One, I go into my prayer closet. I have a powerful subjective internal experience of this. Deconverter and myself are both in agreement. Lockstep so far. In my book, De in my room, Deconverter Man, as we speak, there are at least 50 books. These books have material substance. What do you mean, Craig? I mean they've been written and they're real. I'm not praying to, to make them. I'm not praying that they're there. They're there and they're real and they have material substance. I didn't write any of them. Some of them were written before I was born. They describe the same experience that I'm having almost to a T. And they tell me that it's the Holy Spirit of God. That's one piece of evidence. And that's evidence, dude. You could say that's not evidence that convinces me, Craig. I didn't expect it to be, but that's evidence. Period. Full stop. Here's another piece of evidence. 250 people in the L.A. area I can call up at, right now, today, and I say, hey, I'm having this really powerful subjective internal experience. You ever have that? They go, yeah, I have identical experiences, Craig. Really? Yes. That's the Holy Spirit of God. That's another piece of evidence is the Holy Spirit of God. Those are both pieces of evidence. To me, those are powerfully compelling pieces of evidence. I don't expect them to convince you. But those are, those are evidence, dude. I'm not praying to create either of those two things. They exist in the real world and they confirm my own experience and they are outside of me. So, moving right along to the next leg of the argument because as I said, how I preface this whole thing, I'm not sure that it matters if it's external to me. But you didn't even let me get there. Why? Because you want to route me back to prove that it's really God. That's what you're actually saying. Prove that it's really God. I can't. But I gave you two pieces of evidence. Now, here's the beautiful part, deconverted man, why we never have to talk about it again. Because if you say there's no way on earth that's the Holy Spirit of God, no way, no way, no way, guess what you've done? Everybody, this is a beautiful thing. Hallelujah. You have done it. You have shifted the burden proof back to yourself. Great. Yes, you have. Come up with a better explanation. That's fine. I don't expect you to believe me. As I've said a thousand times, I'm not demanding that you believe me, which means you should stop demanding that I prove it to you. But you said there's no way that's the Holy Spirit of God. That's not good enough evidence. Excellent. Come up with a better explanation. I'll wait. <laughs> Come up with a better explanation because you've shifted the burden proof back to yourself, honestly. So now let's move on. Now that we've got that out of the way.